am the executive director of the Grand Bahama Children's Home, Sheila Johnson Smith. At present, we have 25 children. We just went down to 25, we had 27. We typically have about 27 to 33, but we can accommodate about 40, 45. But of course, we can't at the moment because we just don't have the funding to do so. We get kids that are in, you know, infants up to 13, and when they um, get into their teens, they move out into a different arrangement. We have two buildings, where the, one where the toddlers and the babies are, and the other where the older children are. We take care of the Northern Bahamas. We have children from Bimini and Abaco. And so this home is needed. It's just heartbreaking at times. And our children have been molested sexually. They've been battered, they've been abused, they've been just abandoned. And these children, they're resilient. Our average cost per year is about $450,000. Uh, and our government subsidies uh, are $97,500, and that's twice a year, January and July, for a total of $195,000. That sum, that $195,000, doesn't even really cover our salaries. So we have to raise over $250,000 a year through donations from individuals, businesses, and fundraising events just to provide a safe place for those children who have nowhere else to go. I tell people who ask me about the cost to run the home, I said, well, let's just think about it like this. You have 30 kids in your house. Tell me what you do for those 30 kids in your house when it comes to breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, getting them ready for school, dealing with their um, medical care, and then you'll understand what the kind of cost is that you're talking about. Do you know what that means just to feed them? Let alone have their, have enough diapers for them. The reality is it takes money to run a facility like this. Money that we simply do not have. It's so unfortunate that on weekends, I put 25 children in one building. Can you imagine that with one bathroom? Simply to try to cut down on expenses. Every time Freeport goes through an economic crisis, we have a hurricane, we definitely feel it as well. And so in order to keep these doors open for the next 40 years, we need everybody in the community to come on board and to help these kids. For those who cannot give us funds, come and be a mentor. Come and hug the children. Come spend some time with the children. They love that. We have people that come in and read to them, that give them hugs, that encourage them. There's never any amount of money that is too small, and there's never any amount of service that is too small. This is our computer lab. We were so fortunate that a major corporation and a foundation out of Nassau paid for the, these computers for our children. So we are so grateful for that, and of course, just grateful to persons who have done this for our children. It's really important to remember that these are our children. First of all, they're children. They're children that need to be protected and cared for. Um, and if they don't get that protection and care, we, we know what will happen in the society. We, generally speaking, um, as I said, the outcome isn't good. We have awesome staff, and thank God for volunteers and persons who come and say, I want to help. We're proud about this home and we're proud of how we treat the kids and how successful they can be. We need everybody in the community uh, to come on board and to help these kids. Because as I said, these are our kids. At the Children's Home, we try to give them a happy childhood to combat all the horrendous things that they, no child should see. These are extraordinary children that just want to be loved, that just want to be safe. We have to safeguard them. We have to protect them. We welcome anyone who has the heart for a child. What these children need more than anything else is love and attention. 